Hey everybody, welcome back to my Project 13, the LaEcola Pro 3, the Moto Z Play. I'm going to go over some hardware and software comparisons. Biggest question I get from a lot of the viewers is which device is better than the other. And that's not just with these two devices, all the other devices that I bring in. But when it comes to these two devices, they are completely different. You know, you have Lenovo um, making these Moto devices and you got this new company out of China coming in trying to make their place here in the US market, La Echo. And um, what's different here is the software. So we basically got stock Android. You know, we have a few Moto apps, very minimal, it's either three or four. Um, but you basically have stock Android on this device. And over here you got what they call EUI, Ecosystem User Interface. And if you hit the recent applications key, that's what takes you into your toggle area and your recent applications where you would be able to clear out by just swiping up almost like a Windows device. And you have your settings area here that takes you into your settings. So you do not have your toggle area there like you would have here. You do get your notifications, just like right here in this area, okay? That's a little bit of the same, but they're, they're really set up completely different. Now, does that is that a deal breaker for me? Not for me, but it may be for some. So when you're doing your comparisons and you're, and you're going over what you want, what your lifestyle is, what you're expecting, what you don't want, you have to ask yourself, are you willing to take on a new, uh, 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 UI like that, the skin over the top of Marshmallow, uh, the Moto's running Marshmallow as well. Are you willing to go into a whole different area that you're not used to away from what Android is and what iOS is? And if you don't mind, like me, I'm curious, I'm intrigued, so I don't mind, but I also have a lot of devices because you're looking at maybe buying just one device for the next year or two, so that's what you're stuck with. They all have return policies, so if you don't like it right off the bat, return it. But you have to ask yourself, am I willing to learn this whole new user interface? The skin, is it gonna, is it going to really get into the way of the way I like doing it? Is this, am I gonna always be mumbled jumbled and where I need to go? You know, if you don't have the patience, then I would say no, that's my opinion. But I, I, I in being a reviewer, I don't mind learning new areas like this. And I actually am liking the experience on the Echo. Stock Android will always be my favorite. I will always be a, if you want to use the word fanboy, Nexus fanboy, I, yeah, okay. I just, you know, there is TouchWiz out there and there's iOS, right? We know that and there's other types. There's other company, other OEMs out there with their own software. Um, but stock Android for me will always be number one. But being a reviewer, I'm intrigued and I don't mind learning new areas. So um, the hardware, on, let's just go over the body a little bit. You do have an all metal uh, frame on this device, which is a beautiful gold trim. And you got, this is a modularity device. Um, and so that means that you can adopt other pieces onto the back with these gold pins. So you got back plates that you can bring in. You got a projector, a camera, and, and a speaker. And there, there's third party companies out there gonna be creating a lot more for this device. So um, this is something that I hope continues. Uh, uh, you know, Lenovo did it right here with these Moto devices compared to LG. I hope if LG continues to make modularity devices, they do something, uh, you know, with the blueprint of, of those type of devices that they do uh, uh, better second round. If not, then they need to stay away from that because, you know, it was, you know, the LG G5 was a decent device, but when you, when you look at the Moto lineup, wow, it's just, and, and they're just beautiful. Got all glass back. But again, you can just buy a case and cover that area, or you can use a backplate or the modules uh, to cover that area too. But they, they, it's just one gorgeous, beautiful looking device to look at. Again, glass back, metal frame, got glass area right here, and compared to an all metal unibody device, um, and you got your antenna bands there. But you know, this, this just feels great in hand. Totally stoked to have it in hand, especially something completely different and new. And it, you know, uh, you got your uh, your keys, your back key here, your home key, and your recent applications key. They do light up. I have the uh, them turned on uh, before the system update that came yesterday, and I did a video, a quick video on it because I had just got it, and I said I got to do a video. I got to get it up. I got to let everybody know. 
these were off unless you touched them. But now it gave you the uh, the uh, the option to continuously leave them on. And I'm going to leave them on and see if that does anything to my battery life. I do have a flash coming down this way, so I'm trying to keep them apart so I don't get any glare on here. So, but again, this is all metal, um, metal frame glass, glass back on this one, glass front, but all metal front and back and sides on this beautiful gold device. So that's pretty much um, as far as the build. You have a flash on this uh, five megapixel camera and you have no flash on the eight megapixel camera here. You have a fingerprint sensor here on the front and you don't hear. And I do like this, it works really fast. There you go. Um, so uh, yeah, I wish this had a flash, but it doesn't, it's not a deal breaker. 5.5 uh, inch displays, Super AMOLED, IPS LCD, but it's a beautiful IPS LCD. It's gorgeous. Depending on what you're watching, sometimes it seems like it's much higher than that. Um, you do have your on-screen buttons here. And again, on this device, it's on the chin of the device. I like that. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't mind the fingerprint sensor being here. I'd rather have it on the back, but I'm used to it now. So on the back of this device, the Echo La Pro 3, you have your fingerprint sensor here. It's actually really beautiful too. It looks like a little mirror. Your dual flash with a dual flash that has phase auto detection, uh, laser auto focus with your 16 megapixel camera. And on this device, you have your um, dual flash as well with your cold pins down here. And you also have a 16 megapixel camera with phase auto detection and laser autofocus as well. So uh, the difference is um, on the front, you have a five here and, a, and, an, a, and an eight here as far as the cameras. Uh, so on the bottom of this device, you have your speaker, microphone. So when you're talking actually to whoever's calling in, so that's going to be where you speak into. Um, and a call quality on this device is phenomenal so you don't have to directly speak into that area. Your mouth can be way over here or over here um, and, and, and it, the call quality is just phenomenal. It really is. USB Type-C charging port area. On this device you have a headphone jack, USB charging port area, microphone, your SIM area where your expandable storage up to 256 gigs will go plus your your sim card what i didn't mention is this has no microphone jack it does have an ir blaster with your microphone there and this area which is your earpiece does double as a speaker so you have a speaker here and a speaker here this only has one speaker and it's on the front of the earpiece so that doubles as an earpiece and a speaker as well so that's kind of unique they both double up as earpieces and speakers but this device, the Echola Pro 3, has dual speakers, HTC 10 setup, uh, and again, one single speaker. So yeah, I mean, one of the biggest deal breakers could be no earphone jack. This one does at the bottom, but hey, you know what? That's something you're gonna have to, you know, that's kind of the way a lot of these devices are going. I hope it doesn't totally go away on every device out there, but we'll see uh, how that goes in the future. Again, Basically stock Android. Um, I'm running the Google Launcher here and you got all your apps in here. Very nice setup. This basically is running EUI, ecosystem user interface. So all your apps are going to be basically on your, your pages here, okay? So when I first booted up this device, it basically had everything just on the the first page here and then you just have to work with uh, bringing in your own apps from the play store and adding in everything you need to you can run nova launcher google launcher pixel launcher and so far um as far as performance uh it's working just fine um and and the moto z play as well they both are performing amazingly amazing phenomenally smooth um i'm not having any issues with lag or, or any kind of stutter whatsoever so um as far as that software whether it's eui whether it's basically stock android over marshmallow this is well over marshmallow they're both running and performing outstandingly and i'm just super stoked about that and, that, and it's good for you to know that with this user interface there is no issues whatsoever it is smooth it almost exactly feels like a google pixel device 
I took it into a Best Buy, did a little comparison on my own there. I did rent a, a couple N22 benchmark uh, tests there as well. I got a picture of the score, one of the scores. I did a video on that and posted that score up against this device. But I'm gonna tell you something. The, when you are using this device, it literally feels like a Google Pixel device. Now, it could do something with it having the, the same chipset, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 821. This has a 625. And you have, um, again, 64 gigs of internal storage, no SD card slot for expandable memory, and you got four gigs of RAM. You got three gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage, and it is expandable up to 64 gigs. 264 gigs of memory. So uh, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 65 is just a performer. It reminds me of the 801 and even the 805. Um, but again, the 821 is the latest and the greatest. So if that's what you want and you don't mind this type of user interface, I'm gonna tell you this is a really good experience in this device. We were concerned about software updates. We know that pretty much this device is going to be on par with you know whether security patches or you know uh, a software update eventually and there, it's coming for this device but when you have a chinese based uh, device that's coming in especially coming in from china into america we don't know who they are really are they going to be up to par with updates um well we already received one they have already tweaked some areas on this device they actually added netflix to this they added that feature where you can leave the 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 uh, keys there on or off and there's going to be some other areas i haven't you know thoroughly gone through it but that's something you're going to you know do on your own and anything i find sig that is significant i will bring to you in other videos as i find them but i have no issues with this device when it comes to performance no issue with this device when it comes to performance uh call quality with uh t-mobile 4g lte being on a Verizon Unlocked device, the only area I've had issues is in my meat freezer room at work. Outside of that, call quality has definitely been there. And um, I was more concerned about this device um, coming in unlocked from another country. And uh, how is it going to work with Band 12 with T-Mobile 4G? And it's just phenomenal, phenomenal. So there in that area with messaging, everything's working great as well. So um, that pretty much covers the hardware and software you know um when you when you sound as far as the quality of these speakers you got dual speakers one speaker you got dolby surround sound on this one and um none of that over here just just your average sound but it's it's the moto has a very nice full sound and it's it's got a a decent uh level of sound and the quality is great uh, this device obviously is going to be a little bit louder with the Dolby surround sound. It's going to be a lot. There's going to be more range as far as your surround level of sound and the quality of sounds there. So I would I would definitely, when it came to your quality of audio, I would definitely say that the Echo is there. Display wise, Super AMOLED. If you're into that, which I definitely am, it's going to have a very beautiful display as far as the. Uh, what you get in colors and how vivid and sharp they are. I would say it's better than the Echo, but don't push the Echo IPS LCD display at 1080p aside because it is very, very beautiful. So I'm stoked on both displays, but yeah, I choose AMOLED. Software, yeah, it's all about whether you're stock or if you're, you're intrigued with something new and you don't mind trying something new. I would say try it if you're curious. If you're not, stock Android to me is always gonna be my favorite. Um, the fingerprint sensors, I, I'd rather have mine on the on the back. I don't mind the front, so I would choose this device, the Echo, when it comes to the fingerprint sensor. Um, uh, camera quality, I would have to say that um, the Echo might just edge out the Moto just by a few hairs. And um, I have a video up right now with uh, picture samples. And there are video samples of these in separate videos, so please check them out. And uh, you let me know what you think. But I, I, in my mind, in my opinion, I feel that the Echo La Pro 3 edges out the Moto Z Play when it comes to that area. So as far as hardware, what do you like? Do you like glass? Do you like all metal? It all depends. It all depends. This, this device, aesthetically, all the way around is a little larger. You can see that and a, probably just a tad bit thicker. You know, do you want modularity? Do you not care for modularity? It's up to you. That means you have to spend a little more to bring in uh, some of these mods 
this device you're not going to have to you know uh, the uh, their cameras are almost exactly alike but again I, I just feel that this one has an edge um, aesthetically they just both look beautiful performance it's great 625 up against 821 um, yeah the, the, the 821 is definitely gonna take uh, you know kick the 625 to the curb but when you're using the moto on its own in performance you really never I don't think you're really gonna tell the difference especially the average consumer they're not really gonna see that they're not really gonna feel that is what I'm trying to say but when you're doing tests and you're using them right next to each other you do feel you literally feel that the a21 is just that much better you really really do in my opinion again that is my opinion okay so um, I love the fact that you can change up the, the launchers on this device and I do it on this one as well. So, um, and, and you know, it's up to you what you like and what you don't like. Again, for me, I think getting um, past this into what you're typically used to with a stock Android device or if you're used to touch with or iOS, um, this is probably the biggest deal breaker for most people when it comes to this whole new UI. I mean, it's just, it's different, but I actually really like it. So I've now said that probably two or three times because I feel that's that's the biggest, I mean, if you had basically a setup like the Moto Z Play has here with the way Android is, you know, with Marshmallow on here, if you had this, I mean, this would be like a definite, definite, 100% no-brainer in my mind, in my opinion. This is just going to be the, 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 the main hurdle that anybody mentally will have to get over in, in, in purchasing this device. But when you talk about $299 and what you're getting, you know, this beautiful all metal device, dual speakers, great camera, great battery life. I'm getting six hours with heavy, heavy usage. Moderate use, you're going to get way more than that. Um, you got a great display. Your media consumption is phenomenal on here. Um, you know the engine underneath the hood is like it's like Mopar it's like vroom, you know it just it's just it just roars um, 299 that is worth to me taking the risk but if you don't want to the Moto Z Play is a definite buy in my opinion and something especially with the unlocked variant with band 12 um, most likely Wi-Fi calling uh, so if some of you have that device, let me know if it has Wi-Fi calling. I haven't done my research on that, but um, I'm sure it does. It should have Volte uh, Wi-Fi calling. And, um, uh, you know, yeah, you just, uh, it is going to be 400 and about 50 bucks. So I don't know, you know, you'll probably get a couple of extra accessories or something or a gift card at Best Buy to buy, you know, when you buy that device. But even with that... $299, $450 with a couple accessories or a gift card. You still have to buy the modules. Is it something you want to go into? Is it worth you looking into spending a little more like that because of the type of software that is in the Echo La Pro 3? For me, if it's the only device I'm bringing in and I'm looking at all these devices, just because I've always been that way in my mind, I don't mind crossing the line, I'd probably bring in this device over this device if I wanted two devices well then I'd have them both <laughs> but I have more than that so I you know and some of you out there have two three or four devices okay you're as addicted as I am I don't know let me know the Echo Pro 3 the Moto Z Play you really can't go wrong either way thanks for watching everybody God bless have a great day peace